Smash drunk. Since this channel has covered all the pertinent Koei strategy games for the Super Nintendo over the past few months, it's time to revisit the best of the bunch, and that is Uncharted Waters New Horizons. Now, normally when you sit down to play one of these incredibly dense strategy games from Koei, you're hit with a huge map, a bunch of menus, an endless list of options, and a ton of abbreviations that don't make sense. And when you go to seek help from the instruction manual, you're met with a 70-page book which makes the game feel more like work than a game. New Horizons is a sailing sim with strategy, tactics, adventure, and role-playing game mechanics, but despite how complex and ambitious this game is, it doesn't throw you into the deep end, at least not at first. Instead, what you see when you start up the game is a menu to pick from six different characters you can play as, each with their own scenarios. The first guy here is Joao, a Portuguese dude that needs to live up to the expectations of his father, so he's a young whippersnapper looking to prove himself with his own ship and crew to command. Catalina is a Spanish pirate who's searching for vengeance for the deaths of her brother and her fiancé. Otto was sent by Henry VIII on a secret mission to defeat the Spanish Armada. Ernst is a Dutch cartographer who is content to just explore and make maps and stuff. Pietro is an Italian treasure hunter who wants to pay off his family's debt, and Ali is a Turkish merchant who grew up in poverty and wants to set out on his own. What's really cool about this setup is that the players that you don't choose may also show up during the course of your playthrough, either as friends or as rivals, kind of like Seventh Saga, so that's cool. You see it pretty quickly in Joao's story, which is a nice touch. So, let's say you pick Catalina, because her revenge story sounds like the coolest of the six. How does one get going in this game? Well, first you get a bit of backstory. The poor gal finds out her brother's ship, which was also carrying her fiancé, was attacked by the Francos of Portugal. Catalina says, let's go after him. But the Spanish king says no, he doesn't want all-out war. So instead, Catalina decides to go full-on pirate. She doesn't need her country's help to get vengeance, and that's where you take over. So, you go around town looking for someone to join you, including your own assistant guy, he goes along with you willingly, and agrees to be your hostage to dispel any image that there's a mass rebellion in Spain. It's just one crazy gal looking to avenge her family. Each scenario is filled with small touches like that, and it really helps fill out the story and gives the characters a little more depth. Next, you have to get your crew, rations, and gold organized, and rather than do that through huge full-screen menus that grind the game to a halt, New Horizons simply has you press the X button, which brings up a quick access menu so you can see fleet info, rations, crew statistics, item info, cargo info, all sorts of stuff, and it really helps keep the action moving, especially if you pick someone who's going to trade a lot, like Pietro or Ali. You can also press the R button to remind you of your location, and the L button for a quick stat roundup. Meanwhile, the newly self-proclaimed pirate Catalina has got to go into the local bar to throw a few back and see if she can find a crew to help go after the Francos. Getting soldiers is pretty simple at first, you just buy a treat at the bar for all the patrons there, then ask, hey, who wants to come with me to Spain? Your assistant will round up a certain number, in this case 100 people, and they'll cost 43 gold each travel day. We only need 60 to round out our crew, so we'll take them and assign them to our ship. Next, go to the dock and get your supplies set. 150 barrels each of water and food should do it. Your assistant tells you that that should be good enough for 13 days of sailing. And yes, there is a day-night cycle in this game that you'll have to manage, which affects everything from village store hours to certain events that can happen out at sea. So you set sail, but not before your assistant guy admonishes you for not having a plan. Hey, aren't you my hostage? You can't be telling me what to do. But the guy's right, you need to level up your skills before going after the Spanish, and here's where the game really opens up. New Horizons is the rare Super Nintendo open world game where you can complete your mission as the game expects you to, or you can just sail around and do pirate stuff, explore and visit towns, and just do whatever. Similar to games like Pirate's Gold, you can have a lot of fun in this game just going full pirate and fighting and ransacking every ship you come across, and you can do that with any of the six characters with varying degrees of success. I would recommend this game just based on that. But Catalina needs her revenge, and we need to hone our skills and earn some experience, and the way you do that is to seek out a merchant fleet. While sailing, you can bring up your quick access menu, select the crow's nest, and gather info on what you see. It's also smart to sail alongside the coastline so you can find ports and cities that weren't previously mapped. As you can see, you really need to be patient with this game. It can take a while to find what you're looking for, and if you get bored and decide to just attack a battle fleet, you will get crushed, at least at first. There's multiple ways to win battles. You can eliminate the crew on the enemy's flagship, or simply sink the ship itself. 
You can force the enemy to flee, or you can defeat the enemy commander in a duel. And the duels are actually pretty fun. You get 10 turns to defeat your opponent using a card system, which are randomly drawn. The number on each card indicates the strength of that attack or defense, with 9 being the strongest, and you gotta read your opponent's pattern to block, parry, thrust, or strike at the right time. Adding to this mode are the four different swords you can use that you'll find on your journey, and each have strengths and weaknesses laid out in the manual. That's just how Catalina's scenario starts out. Each character has very different objectives and expectations, like Ernst the cartographer. He barely needs a crew, doesn't need much supplies, and his campaign can be completed without any combat whatsoever. Contrast that with Otto, who has to start an entire naval fleet from scratch, starting with 300 gold. Yeah, good luck with that, dude. But that brings me to the next thing that helps New Horizons stand out amongst all the other Koei games. The complexity, and choice paralysis, is all still here. It's just not put at the forefront, like other strategy games. There's just as much stuff in this game as there is in nearly every other Koei game. Like there's gaining fame and a reputation in trade, adventure, or piracy. There's debt financing if you run out of money. Or you could just play blackjack with an old sailor and get money back that way. There's guilds you can join that give you job assignments to complete, which includes a bunch of side quests like collecting debt or transporting goods. There's 120 different ports you can visit. So yeah, in other words, Otto can totally build a navy starting with 300 gold, if you play your cards right. There's also managing your fleet, like if you're going to be fighting a lot, then you'll want a ship with a higher gun capacity, good durability, and a high tacking rating for mobility, whereas if you're a merchant or explorer, you'll need lots of cargo capacity without much of a crew. There's even smaller details you learn as you play the game more, like how you want to stay the heck away from sailing near West Africa, unless you want to sit through like five storms in a row. Plus, there's crazy stuff that can happen out of nowhere, like ghost ships following you, or discovering animals like the dodo bird. There is a lot to this game, but it unfolds in a more organic way than most other strategy games. It doesn't beat you over the head with an endless number of options. And jeez, all this talk so far, and I haven't even mentioned the music, which is pitch perfect throughout the game. So yeah, New Horizons takes a little bit from each Koei game. The complexity of PTO, the adventure elements of Venindo Way of the Ninja, the sheer amount of stuff you can do in games like Nobunaga's Ambition or Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and really, it's just a great sequel to a game that really needed one. I still like the original Uncharted Waters, but New Horizons is incredible. It's the one Koei game where the style matches the substance. Even if this game were made with just one of the scenarios, I'd still consider this a fine playthrough. But the fact that there's six different characters with six different objectives and all sorts of ways to go about doing things, well, then, you're looking at a top 20 Super Nintendo game. Simple as that. It's the kind of game where if you get 10 different people to play this one, they'll come up with 10 different approaches. You can go in completely blind with nothing but the game and the manual, you could tape copious amounts of notes, you could play just to get rich, play to get famous, or play to become a pirate that destroys everything. The game gives you the freedom to figure things out at your own pace. New Horizons was originally made for the X68000 in April 1993 before getting ported to the PC-98, Sega Genesis, and Super Nintendo in October 1994, and getting later releases on PlayStation and Saturn. And I've read that there's a remake out there somewhere, but it has microtransactions, so that's a big no thanks from me. Otherwise, New Horizons is one game you're going to want to seek out and play any way you can. If you ever play one Koei game on the Super Nintendo, make sure it's this one. And that is all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.